All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you were given these five problems to start when you came in the room. We're going to go over these five problems now that you're in the room and have had some time to work on them. I realize not everyone is done. We have set up the first one because remember on all divisions, we're going to list our multiples because it makes your life easier. If you do that, but it takes more work. I don't care. <laughs> it does make your life easier. So please continue to follow with that, because otherwise I have to yell at you. So I ask myself, self, does 57 go into 4? Myself says? Yeah. No. I ask myself, self, does 57 go into 42? Myself says? No. I ask myself, self, does 57 go into 424? Myself yes. says? Yes. Yes. So I have a two digit. Good job, two digits quotient. Now I come over here and I got to find as close to 424 as I can get in my multiples without going over. I have 57, 114, 171, 228, 285, 342. 399, 456, which is too big, so I have to go to 7, so 57 times 7, my multiple goes on the top, or my, sorry, what I'm multiplying goes on the top, and 57 times 7 is 399, and just remember, because you can only put one number at the top at a time, then I need to find the difference of these two numbers. So I gotta subtract, it looks like it's 25. It's 251. 251. Yeah, you're right. 251. Or 25. And then bring down the one. Yeah. It's 25. Yeah. Then we bring down the one. The next number goes over the one because that's what we brought down. Yeah. Then I have to get as close to 251 as I can get without going over, and it looks like it's 228. Because 285 is too big. So it must be 57 times 4. 57 times 4, we already said, is 228. And should be 57 remainder 23. But wait, Mr. McMurdo. I want to know if I got the problem correct. That's a good idea. To figure that out, we'd multiply 57 times 74 and add 23. And we want it to equal 424. So that is how we would determine whether or not we got it done correctly. I'm not going to do that because you all can do that on your time. Our next problem is 1,391 divided by 73. I'm going to pause this while we get it set up. And we're back. We've set up our division problem. We've listed our multiples, 73, so that we can easily do this division. So I ask myself, self, does 73 go into 1? Myself no. says? No. I ask myself, self, does 73 go into 13? Myself says? No. I ask myself, self, does 73 go into 139, myself says? Yes. 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 Which means I'm going to have a two-digit quotient. And if I look at my multiples, 73, 146, 146 is too big. So 73 times 1. And I find the difference of 139 and 73, which is what? Um, 66. 66. And when I subtract, I always want it to be less than my divisor. So if I got a number bigger than 73 here, I've done something wrong. Either this number's wrong or my subtraction is wrong. Then I bring down my 1, which is why the next number goes directly above the 1. Putting them, putting the numbers in your quotient exactly where they go is very important. Especially as you get to decimals, because it'll mess you up if you don't. 
Now I have to take it into 661, so I go down until I find closest to 661 as I can get, and it looks like times 9, because times 9 is 657. And that looks like it'd be 4, is that right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And the remainder 4, if I wanted to check it, it'd be 19 times 73 plus 4. Quotient times your divisor, add your remainder. D -mac. Okay. So if we wanted to do that, we could check it. It would be good on an assignment or a test to check it because you want to get good grades. Well, most of you want to get good grades. So now we have 96 hundredths divided by 4. I do not have to list my multiples of 4 because I have a multiplication chart. I have a multiplication chart. If I were taking a test where I didn't have a multiplication chart and I was given that graph paper that they give you on some state test that I think is stupid, then you could go to Zoom on your backpack. Um, then I would just write one. You could count it out if you even needed to. My decimal point goes straight up. Then I'm done with my decimal point. Once I move it straight up, I am done with the decimal point. And does 4 go into 0? No. no. Does 4 go into 9? Yes. How many times? Okay, so I'm going to have two digits in my decimal, in my quotient. Goes in two times, two times four is? Eight. 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 I'm going to subtract. I bring down the six, that's why my next number goes directly above the six. How many times is four going to 16? Four. Four, because four. Four. four times four is 16. And I get zero. So my answer is 2,400. If, again, I wanted to check it, I could multiply 24 hundredths times 4. How many numbers would be behind the decimal point in my product? Two. Two. Because there's two behind it in the problem, so there has to be two behind it in the answer. Does that make pennies? Let's take... 48 and 3 hundredths divided by 4. 48 and 3 hundredths divided by 4. I start by asking myself, self, does 4 go into 4? Yes, myself says yes. And I subtract, I get 0, I bring down my 8. I ask myself, self, does 4 go into 8? Yeah. How many times? 2. Two. And 2 times 4 is 8. Subtract and I get 0. If you do not line your decimal points up, or you put your numbers in your quotient where it goes, stop yelling at me like that. All right, then I bring down my zero. This is where we call it, we have problems. If you don't put a number above here, there has to be a number above the zero. Well, how many times is four going to zero? Zero. zero. You have to have that zero or it's not going to work. It will not work. Four doesn't go into three. So I'd have to add another zero. 30. How many times? So it's going to go above here. How many times is 4 going to 30? Seven. Seven. Seven times. 7 times 4 is 28. Subtract 2. Add my zero. Bring it down. And if you carried it all the way out, that's what the answer would be. If you didn't carry it all the way out, that's okay as well. When we multiply with decimals, 
you do not line up the decimal points. In fact, we don't even worry about the decimal points. We don't even worry about the decimal points. We rewrite it, ignoring the decimal points. So when I rewrite it, when I rewrite it, then I'm just going to do it 814 times 31. I'm rewriting it, ignoring the decimal points. I don't need to look at the decimal points right now. It's not important right now. It's not important until we get our final product. And then obviously my ones all the way through are easy. Now I'm moving to my tens place. Don't forget the zero. The zero because we're moving to the tens place. We're multiplying by 30 now. That's why that zero comes down because we're multiplying by 30, not just three. Three times four is 12. Three times one is three plus one is four. Three times eight is 24. And I get so those are the numbers that are going to be in my product, and just like the warm-up you did yesterday, we go back and we look. In my problem, how many numbers are behind the decimal point? Three. Three. This, this, and this. There are three numbers behind it in the, in the problem. There have to be three numbers behind it in the answer. Now, if I want to make sure my answer makes sense, if I just multiplied my whole numbers, what's 8 times 3? 24. 24. So if I just multiplied my whole numbers, I'd get 24. Now if I put my decimal point here, I'd get 2. Is 2 close to 24? Yeah. No. 25 close to 24. Yes. Now if I put my decimal point here, because I wasn't sure where to put it, I would get 252. Is that close to 24? Yeah. So use the estimation. That will help you also place the decimal point. Thank you.